with, with Windows Azure, you have this two special config files here, the csdev and the cscfg file. Let's open them. The csdev file, here can define settings. Um, for instance, we could say we have a setting and call this one, I don't know, a customer order database, okay? Copy this one. Here we just declare that there is a setting that is called customer order database. And in the CS config file, we can define this one. So we say, uh, let's format this one, setting name equals customer order database and value equals to server equals dot database equals of course you in, in here you could add your your server name and all this stuff from your SQL Azure instance uh, I don't have internet here in this uh, hotel room and therefore I use just my my local SQL server instead and integrated uh, security equals true. Of course, when you uh, use SQL Azure, please keep in mind that you have to use encryption, first one, and second one, you cannot use integrated authentication. Of course, SQL Azure just supports SQL uh, authentication, so you have to use user and password, and you have to protect user and password appropriately. But I will not go into any details uh, concerning that. Now we have this customer order database connection uh, setting here in our CS config file uh, and we have to read it here but wait a second why don't we use the web.config file well the beauty of Windows Azure is that you can turn your web role with a simple setting here in the config file from a single server to a web form we could just can say instances count five and we will get five web servers we can we will get a web form with a load balancer and all this stuff and if you uh, configure Windows Azure like this you will end up getting five machines and all of these machines have their own web.config file if you store your connection string in the web.config file what you could uh, but you shouldn't um, you upgrading is, is and, and changing the connection string is, is quite hard so you should not use the web.config file for your Azure project instead you should use the CS config file from the web.config it's it's simple you could use system.configuration uh, to to get your web.config settings but what to do when you want to load the settings from the CS config file well that's that's easy there is one important class for that <coughs> it's called it's called role environment. You will get it from Windows Azure Service Runtime, and this one has a method that is called get configuration setting value. And here, in this get configuration setting value, you pass one parameter, and this parameter is the name of the setting. So you see, very very simple. Uh, let's make this one a little bit smaller. You see, SQL connection and the configuration string is read from your CS config file. There is one CS config file for all of your web role instances. Okay, a few usings here, and we have the command that is prepared. And yep, yeah, that one's fine. Now we have to uh, loop through all the the lines in the CSV file. Uh, let's, let's say for each var file row. Um, in file content dot split. Well, I will skip uh, things like error handling here. I'm sure you can do that for yourself. It's just a demo. And inside the file row, we have to say of our columns equals to file row dot split and split it here uh, with a semicolon. And now we can. Yeah, we can do the rest. So command of parameters. The first parameter value is the order date. So we say date time dot parse, and we have the columns um, zero. And to do a little bit of error handling, we could say if columns dot length uh, exceeds, uh, sorry, is equal to three. Um, well, in practice, you have to do a little bit more of error handling here, but that's enough for our sample. So we say parameters one. This will be the customer name. So we say just columns one. And last but not least, we say command dot parameters two. And here we have value. And this one is the the amount. So we say decimal dot parse uh, columns uh, two. Fine with that. And say con execute non query. 
So what you should see from this example is that it is very, very easy to access SQL Azure. It's just like programming a normal SQL server. But keep in mind you're programming against the database cluster and therefore you have to follow all the best practices and rules that Microsoft has defined for working, for programming against a, a SQL server cluster. We can try out our sample oops I did something wrong here let's let's check this one out on file upload click okay no I, I did something wrong I screwed up this one I'm not an ASP.NET programmer I'm really not into ASP.NET so um, the ID is not on file upload click the ID is uh, file upload and we say cl on click equals to on file upload click this looks better and last but not least we have to say um, uh, order this one or uh, file upload oh, that's that's fine okay let's hit a five and and check this one out uh, I'll show it to you um, let's clean this table delete from video storage demo and so on hit a five yes the, the table is now empty so we say select star just to prove the point and let's get back to our back to our uh, sample form here we have the sample form let me make that a little bit smaller for you so you see the whole form you see wow this great ASP.NET site that I've built <laughs> and let's check this one out let's open it with the notepad for instance you see very simple CSV file just demo data generated a few minutes ago uh, take this one hit upload file and now our locally installed development fabric is working and working and working it's it's working quite a while to to handle all this stuff calling the the store procedure over and over again and in a few moments yeah this this is it we should have the database filled and we see 149 rows uh, I know the number of rows in the CSV file and 149 is perfectly perfectly okay the question is is this a good solution well it is a working solution and you could say a working solution is a good solution but it's it's really not a solution that makes the most from Windows Azure what we should do is we should separate processing of the customers orders from receiving customer orders so we want to have a website a web role that just takes the the orders it receives the orders and passes off the processing work to another instance to a so-called worker role and um, the the web role and the worker role communicating communicate over so-called queues queues are a uh, a principle from Windows Azure storage um, just as the name says it is a first in first out storage concept so the web role can um, send messages through the queue the worker role can listen to the queue and whenever an item appears on the queue it can get the item and process it the web role is freed from the the burden to to have to uh, process on to do all the heavy processing it can give the user immediate response and therefore it can accept a lot a lot a lot of orders and this is what we want I mean we never never ever want to say no we cannot receive orders processing is okay can take a while but we always want to be ready to receive new orders we will change our uh, application uh, accordingly in the the next part of this sample we will split the work between worker and web role and use Windows Azure queues and Windows Azure table storage to transfer data between worker and web role 